the winter has thawed and nature's new year begins. And with it, our quest for the Grand Marshal of the Spring Parade. Colonel Tom Kelly describes turkey hunting as a compulsion. Why else would we wake up so early, stand around in the dark, make weird noises? I am sitting in a sneak pit for a blind, desperate times. All for the fleeting chance to hear spring thunder. I would expand on the colonel's words that this compulsion is more of an addiction. And it's time for me to try and get my fix in. Apparently it isn't just public land where other hunters are getting in and messing me up. Did you see it too? I mean, it's gotta be somebody that's not supposed to be in here, right? As we try to find the other hunters, we hear the bird fly down. So we back up to a field and try to call him up to us. set up and sit on a different field that they may have been walking towards and just as I can see movement in the brush they bust out of there turns out dad was running back to get me after striking one up so after he apologized we go off again after this one
go back to this one. Because this may be somebody down here. I don't know. Those other hunters ended up on our heels all morning, but turns out they were legit, so no big deal. The rest of the morning was quiet and calm and left me hoping to get back sooner rather than later. first few hunts of my next weekend back were absolutely dead. So, like a lot of times, I guess it all rides on the last day. Sorry for the break in, but apparently this happens to everybody when they start making videos. I double tapped the shutter button, meaning that I thought I was recording some things when I actually wasn't recording some things. So I thought I'd break in here and explain what's happening. So after a very quiet morning, we got up in some of our, we call them shooting houses. Some people call them box blinds. It, they've got a million names. You pick whichever one you want. We got up in those just to get above the high grass that has started to grow and see if we could hear anything. You can kind of hear down in the bottoms to see if anything's happening. And I started hearing some gobblers go off back towards where I'd actually sat the day before for several hours. I actually jumped out of the house and tried to get down to them, but I couldn't really tell where they were coming from, so I just ended up sitting in this brush for like 45 minutes to an hour. With the wind blowing and everything, you couldn't really hear them in the microphone, but eventually they kind of cooled down, and so we went and grabbed some lunch, and Dad talked me in to trying to get around them from the other side and giving them one last shot. So, back to it. So we're gonna give this one more shot. We're gonna come at this bird in a different direction. Oddly enough, we're coming from where I sat yesterday for hours. We're gonna give it one last solid go around. Let's see if we can get this one fired up and in the back of the truck. Now I'll admit to being pessimistic on the walk in here, but he's still in here.
everybody has different tactics when it comes to working a bird. So here's a bit of my strategy and inner monologue working this one. I'm not going to say it's the right thing to do and how you should do it. It's just how I chose to play it this time. After my last call to him, I want him to gobble twice before I call again. Give him what he wants for just a minute. And then I'll shut up and I want him to gobble three times. Give him just enough so he knows I'm still here. And now I wait for four gobbles. Next call, I add in some scratching so it sounds like there's hens feeding. He's stuck at the bottom of the hill that we're on top of, so any added dimensions to your calling will help. Enforcements come in with another tool to use, a decoy. After our debate on whether or not we can even get the decoy out far enough without being seen, we go for it.
Once dad gets back set, I take the bird's temperature again. For the first time all afternoon, I had met with silence. But soon after, all our work mentally and physically come together when I finally hear. He's coming around the road. All right, that's a good bird. Turkey hunting is special for many reasons. The one-on-one -on -one interactions and strategy is an incredibly unique experience. But personally, it's something that me and my dad started doing together. Neither one of us turkey hunted until I was well into high school. So to me, it's not something that he has passed down to me it's something that we have shared equally. As the seasons and years roll on, life constantly evolves, and many of my hunts have started to become more arduous and have taken me further from home. So it makes me treasure every bird, every encounter, and every hunt with my father even more. <laughs>